Hello and welcome to my quick overview of the Sekonic L308B light meter. In this tutorial I'm just going to go quickly through some of the buttons and how to use it in ambient and flash mode. First of all I want to show you where the battery goes. This light meter takes a double A battery and it just goes in the back there. To begin with we just want to switch it on. And if you switch this button called power at the top left hand corner, hold it down for a few seconds, you will find that it slowly comes on. Here is our lens and this is the lens that will be measuring the light that's falling into the light meter. The lens here which is uncovered or you can cover it up with what we call a lumosphere. With this light meter, you're able to take two different types of readings. One is incidental light meter reading and the other one is reflective. Now, an incidental light meter reading is measuring the light that is falling directly onto your subject. But this is a suitable light meter reading for when you can actually get up close to your subject. The other one is reflective, which is measuring the light that is being reflected off your subject. And this is usually done when you can't actually physically get up close to your subject. First of all, I'm going to go through incidental light meter readings. And to measure them, we need to have the lumosphere covered over our lens. So if we just slide it back over. The next thing is we need to tell the light meter what mode of light we are measuring. That is what type of light. And this is very important because light can either be continuous or it can be intermittent. So we'll press our mode button and as I keep pressing it you can see that the things shown in my LCD panel slightly changes. But what I want you to be paying most attention to is the little icons that are in the corner here. Um, so we've got daylight, another daylight, and then we've got a flash, and then we've got a flash with a C. Basically, in order what these are, is you've got two flash options. The first flash option is to be able to measure the flash power remotely without a cord. When I say cord, I'm talking about the flash sync lead that we quite often use in the studio. To be able to do measure remotely is you will select that option and then press the button on the side there and um, you will see that it starts to blink. Once it starts blinking, it's waiting for the flash power to be triggered. You then fire your flash manually, and once it's triggered, it will take a value. The next one along is flash C, that is flash with a cord and this is the one that you will most likely be using in the studio. Flash with a cord is with a flash sync lead. This is just to measure general strobe flash power lighting. The next one along is the daylight EV mode which is exposure value. That one is slightly more advanced. Um, there's a formula that goes with this, which is EV equals AV plus TV, which means your exposure value will be your aperture value plus your time value, which is your speed. Um, that's slightly more advanced, so what I'm going to do is go onto the shutter speed priority ambient mode lighting next. So if you press it one more time, you get your F number and your T number up. So the other one really is if for a option when you know what your AV and TV setting is. Um, for the shutter speed priority, quite often photographers might want to use freezing or blurring and you can use your shutter speed priority mode with ambient light with the very last option on the mode dial. Um, basically here you have your F number and your T number and T stands for timed shutter speed um, and then your F number stands for F stop which is your aperture. Ambient light is basically light that is continuous, so we're talking about daylight or a hot light. When we're talking about a strobe light, which is um, an American term, we're actually talking about flash power that is triggered and is only seen once it's been triggered, whereas ambient light is light that you don't have control over and it's constantly flowing around us. Um, so I'm going to go back to the flash with the C for the moment. 
once we're in the studio, for example, and I'm going to link it up to the light via a flash sync lead, I will put the flash sync lead in this port here. Um, then I will set my time value depending on my leaf shutter or my shutter that I've got in my camera. This is very important because you need your flash to be able to sync with your shutter speed. If in doubt, just put it on 60, which is on now. Otherwise, you will want to put it up or down. Pro Photo will sync at 125th of a second. And if you've got like a leaf shutter camera, it will sync up to speeds of 250th of a second. This is really important to make sure that you get it right, mainly because if your shutter is too fast for the flash, you will record the shutter in your image and half of it will be black and half of it will be exposed. If you're not too sure, and just put it on 60th because this is safer. Your F number is the number that we don't know and all that we really want to do is put in the ISO um, before we take our reading and we're reading 400 at the moment and we don't want that in the studio. Usually we want 100 or 200. I'm going to put it down to 200 because quite often I use a CMOS sensor and CMOS sensor's native ISO rating is 200 and you will get better highlights when shooting at 200 because it's programmed to shoot at that speed. A lot of people do think for digital 100 is better but the CMOS sensor is not designed for that and actually if you press 100 it will shoot it at 200 and then process it to make it 100 at the end so i'm going to set 200 so that i get better detail in my highlights and then i will simply press the um, button on the side here to take my f number reading and it says 2.8 the lower the aperture it does signify the lower the light source that you've got because it's suggesting that you have a large aperture so in the studio although this is 2.8 I'm on location at the moment in the studio I'm really looking between 8 and f16 and that will usually be put there um, along a bit we're going to go to normal daylight and we will again put it on 60th of a second and I will take a light meter reading and it will say 2.8. If I'm not happy with that reading, if I feel that actually that gives me too narrow depth of field, I can change it by pressing upwards. I can increase my speed. By increasing my speed, my aperture then gets larger because obviously that's the, um, don't want to go that way. But if I make my speed slower, you can see that my aperture value is increasing f8. If I want to photograph a um, portrait, I might want to um, stop there. Um, 5.6 is the best aperture for a portrait and so my time value will be 15th of a second. Okay, so that's a quick overview of how to use it for ambient and flash incidental readings. I'm just going to quickly cover reflective. And reflective really is measuring the light that's coming off of your subject and going into your lens. So quite often I will probably, if I want to do that, put the light meter by my lens and take a meter reading. As so here, you can see my button. I will take a meter reading and it's telling me that my F number is 8 and my time value needs to be 1 15th. Obviously remember, once you are taking a meter reading, if you're going to do it incidentally, if you are going to um, be putting the lumosphere over, this will be taking an average of the light falling at different directions and if you're going to be photographing a portrait you will most often want to place it in the main area of focus which is around the nose and the, the eyes um, but some people prefer to take the reading which is just under the chin but it's up to you how you want to work with that. Um, obviously when you are measuring daylight ambient readings just remember to make sure your ISO is slightly higher so if you're still unhappy with your aperture and your speed readings you can increase the ISO just by pressing it down and pressing up button and as you increase your ISO making it more sensitive to light your aperture gives you a smaller reading which might be more useful depending on what you're photographing. Um, that's all for now. I think further detail will be in other posts. Okay, thanks for listening.